right okay so I wanted to kind of take a short video here I've got a Cummins RS 25 generator and uh, I can't seem to find very many videos online of these things wanted to kind of give you guys a review of this thing and take you know have, go through it and show you uh, what it looks like and what it sounds like and uh, show you how I got it all hooked up here so I just got the permits all signed off uh, last week so everything's good to go this thing tests out great um, but uh, again just wanted to show everybody what uh, what we have here so this is the inside on the side here uh, it's got a 2.5 I think it's a 2.5 or 2.4 liter four-cylinder car engine in it uh, takes standard spin-on filters here of course you have to buy them through Cummins as well as the spark plugs um, it comes with a uh, a uh, a um, coolant heater actually from the factory which is pretty nice it also comes with a battery charger from the factory as well wasn't quite clear on what the the factory options are um, that it actually comes with um, there are some other good options to add if you really wanted to you can get a uh, um, upgrade to the excitation system you can also get a uh, a heater for the uh, the generator alternator itself which is right back in here um, this is the control panel here that's in the generator uh, and the control panel itself goes through and lists different options and, and uh, different data points right now it's reading the battery voltage as well as the voltage here or the uh, coolant temperature uh, if you scroll through here it shows what the transfer switch is set at currently it's set it to the utility um, it shows what the current is for both phases uh, if it was running it would show what the voltage would be uh, as well as the power and the, the frequency and the RPMs. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the other side now. You can see here it's got a uh, standard, I think it's a Group 26 car battery it uses to uh, to start and maintain. There's the other side of the engine there. The intake uses a uh, special Cummins air filter here as well of course. This one is set to run on natural gas. Um, I'll show you the gas line again on the other side. There's the battery charger down here. Came pre pre wired from the factory with the battery charger installed. Um, and then behind the left panel there on the left is the uh, control wiring. And the panel on the right is the AC uh, auxiliary circuit wiring. So that's where the, uh, the heater and the battery charger and everything comes in through a stub up in the concrete underneath. And the left one is where all the control wire stub up comes in. Now one thing I think is interesting about this is there's a uh, drain wire right here, a drain uh, uh, hose right here for the uh, the oil pan down there, which means it should be pretty easy to drain the oil out of this thing. I know I've, I've seen some videos online of some of the Generacs and other generators that have the uh, the car engines in them, and uh, draining the oil out of them is very, very challenging. you got to reach around and stick your hand somewhere you can't see. This thing is really well designed and thought out in the open here for maintenance and service uh, shouldn't be a problem we got a bottle over here that shows the antifreeze level coolant levels um, and then again you can see all the different settings actually it's got coil packs up here too uh, which is nice so you don't have to worry about uh, you know plugs when you change the plugs on this thing you don't have to worry about much of anything just taking the coil packs off and swapping the plugs out uh, it looks like you can get to them pretty well from here as well there's plenty of room up on top there to be able to do that so going back to the other side again real real quick um, you can see there's the gas line that's coming in here right behind here there's where you check the oil the dipstick is right there for the oil um, the uh, charging alternator is right there for the for everything the, the belts are right there looks like it'd be pretty simple to change out the belt on that thing it's not very very well hidden in there um, so I got the gas line that comes with it. This this piece here, this flex piece comes with it. It's required by code for vibrational issues. So I got my gas line running here, coming out here to the side. And I still got to paint this. This is a little rusty here through a, a union and it's fastened down there. I got my drip line and my shutoff valve right down there. And uh, going back over here for a minute. So you've got two panels here. You've got one here, which is the AC fade, fade coming in. That's the breaker, the main breaker right there. And there's an optional breaker you can add. It's a secondary right here behind this panel. Right now that panel is just empty. There's nothing in there. Um, but uh, 
you could put a secondary breaker in there if you wanted to for whatever reason so my gas line and electrical conduits are all running underground here right along here onto the slab over here to gas meter so that's the residential input for the the, the, the gas company and there's the uh, the new riser that I put in gas company came out and installed all this out here which is fantastic there's actually another valve over there that they put in as well a little bleed right there uh, all the conduits underneath the ground here comes over here to the three conduits that run up here so you've got on the left there the auxiliary AC conduit that's 120 volts again for the charger and uh, auxiliaries the middle one's the control conduit and then the right one here is the generator power now all that runs up into the wireway which you see here which then goes into the transfer switches and inside of the main panel in here so I've got uh, two sub panels in the garage this is a 300 amp split phase service meaning I've got two main breakers here um, to each feed 150 amps to each feed one of the panels in the garage so the, the, the power wiring actually goes through here behind this panel up through and into the garage to feed two sub panels I've got a couple circuits here as you can see that are not backed up so I didn't back up the generator auxiliaries uh, there's a surge suppressor hooked up here there's a solar meter here for uh, solar edge metering and then this used to be the pool pump which has now been moved over to this sub panel here which is backed up uh, on the generator as well so I've got the pool pool pump hooked up here I got a garage circuit here for uh, a table saw which doesn't necessarily need to be backed up but it was just easier to wire up I got something in the office here for my radio and I got another 120, 120 volt circuit for my radio as well in there I'll go ahead and show you the inside of the uh, transfer switches here in just a second all right so I just got the uh, transfer switch cover off here I wanted to show everybody the inside of the transfer switch again there's not much information about these things online or on the uh, on the videos you can read the manuals the installation manuals but it's not very clear when you look at some of the pictures how things are set up so um, I've got again I've got two transfer switches because I've got a 300 amp split phase service in my house so I need to feed two sub panels right and uh, they don't make these things in certain sizes so I've got two 200 amp non-service entrance rated panels here um, each panel feeds the sub panel in the house right so there's again there's two 150 inch sub panels in the house now what you've got down here is you got the generator wire coming in there that's the generator wire and then behind that underneath that is the load wire right so that's actually the load into the house though the, the lugs that are underneath there go to the panels behind there on the top that's the service entrance that's getting fed from the uh, the, the main panel breakers over here on the left over here in that main panel right you got the neutrals right there and then over here is your control wiring right that's all of the relays and everything else that are, are connected up there comes in through that uh, right there through that conduit um, through uh, that, that right, uh, left side of the, the generator that I guys showed you guys in the video now there's also a relay you need to have hooked up in here as well um, for two panels or more right there that's a special relay well not special relay you can just buy pretty much any relay that's got the right contacts on there so that when this thing kicks over it triggers the second panel over here on the right to kick over um, but again you can do this manually too there's a uh, place for a lever to hook up right there if you want to go ahead and hook up a lever they've got that provides they provide a lever with you guys um, you can do that um, other than that that's the inside of the panel I'm going to go ahead and uh, start it up so you guys can hear it starting and running. Um, I'm going to use the, uh, the the Power Command app. So I've got an app on my phone from Cummins called the Power Command. You can buy a uh, module that gets installed that basically can control the generator remotely via this app through their, their Power Cloud. Um, in addition to it providing statistics on the generator on your phone. So I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can start this thing while this is recording. We'll see if it works. Starts up. It's going to kick over. Transfer switch is just kicked over. So now I'm on the generator power. You can hear the natural gas running through the meter there. And we're going to go check out everything inside. Now one of the cool things about this is 
if you start this thing before the power shuts down, it's almost instantaneous from a transfer perspective. Uh, it's just a slight brownout inside the house and not much gets impacted with regards to uh, how this thing actually functions. The only exception is, is if you, uh, if you uh, lose power, it will take a couple seconds to start up and transfer over, so obviously you're gonna lose power, which is still critical to have all your stuff that you need on backup uh, batteries if, uh, if you don't wanna lose any power for a few minutes while it transfers over. So here you can see on the panel here, the battery voltage, as well as the coolant temperature, how long it's been running. Scroll through here, you can also see that it's transferred over to the generator. You can see what the current is showing currently today. And there's the voltage. As well as PDA, 60 hertz, and uh, RPMs. So I hope you found that video uh, helpful in help you know making a decision as to what type of backup system you're looking at getting here for your house. Um, I chose the Cummins because uh, it's a good brand. Uh, you know, Kohler's good as well, uh, but the Cummins gets really good reviews online from what I've read. It's really quiet. There's a lot of options out there for it as far as uh, different things that you can do to it. Like I said, you can get a, a couple of different things inside for excitation, um, which will make it a little bit more robust for, for motors and stuff. I will tell you, this thing does work very well for the AC units that we have installed at the house. So we've got two AC units. We've got a three ton and a two and a half ton. Uh, and uh, it, it starts both of them and runs both at the same time with no issues at all um, on the, uh, the, the, the standard setup that comes with the generator. Now, um, we've also tested our oven. You know, we've got a, a standard oven. You know, it's about 9,000 watts. That works great. You can do that and run the... Uh, the generator or the uh, AC at the same time if you wanted to um, you know and the rest of the stuff in the house that we have isn't very high high, high value uh, wattage and it doesn't require a lot of power to run with the exception of the pool pump which will work um, but one thing I, that uh, I've observed is when it transfers over from line to uh, um, the generator it does trip the uh, GFCI breaker on the pool pump so that just needs to be reset but uh, it will run that and all the other stuff, no problem. One other thing that I'm really impressed with is, uh, as I mentioned in the video, I actually am into amateur radio, and uh, I've got uh, my radio set up in the front office, and uh, I just tested that out as well to see how much noise is actually going to be introduced on the various different uh, frequencies. And I'll tell you, I'm very impressed. This generator puts up virtually no noise. Um, so I'm, I, you know, I have my uh, radio app up on the uh, computer, um, STR Uno and this thing is fantastic. There's real, virtually no noise on this thing. There are a little bit of a harmonic showing up, but it's very, very, very um, small to the point where it barely registers uh, on the S meter on the radio. So uh, in general, I'm very happy with this generator. Uh, I did it all myself. Uh, we live in Florida. Florida allows you to, to act as a contractor in your own behalf. Uh, if you sign an affidavit and, and do all the work yourself, you can do that here. Your state may vary. Please definitely check your codes and laws regarding the work. Um, the, uh, the the area where I live is, is absolutely fantastic. They helped me out actually quite a bit. I had a couple of questions about how they measure stuff, the authority having jurisdiction, how they measure stuff and where they, they what they look at, right? So. You know, from an insulation perspective, this is not an easy job. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, it took a lot of work and effort. It, it's not easy, but it's very rewarding uh, in the, the cost savings involved. Uh, I'll tell you, I got three quotes to put this thing in. And uh, based on those quotes, I saved probably the cost of the generator itself in some cases. One guy wanted double the cost of the generator uh, to install this thing, which I thought was nuts. Um, so... Even down to running the gas line, uh, you know, the get some polyethylene gas line here. It's almost like uh, shark bite fittings. You push fit and push your foot together and and pressure test it and make sure it passes. You know the code. It's fantastic. The, the hardest part about all of that was digging the uh, the trench, right? So the required trench I think is 18 inches down, and uh, we've got sandy soil here. So it's a challenge to to dig down 18 inches for about 30 feet, you know, and and make sure that you don't 
hit anything and you keep everything out of the way darn sprinkler heads are in the way so you got to go around them and under them and such things as that but i'll tell you what absolutely fantastic generator i'd recommend it to anybody don't get the smaller ones get the 1800 rpm liquid cool generator smaller ones are just going to come back and bite you in the butt they got the stupid lawnmower engines in they can't run very long this thing out here will run you know very very long time it's rated for thousands of hours uh, and you know before 10,000 hours I think is what the rating on the alternator is before it has to get rebuilt I mean this darn thing is is bulletproof so uh, I would certainly recommend this to anybody uh, the the smallest size that they got for the 1800 rpm unit is I think it's 22 kilowatts so there's a 22 a 25 and a 30 and then of course they get much bigger beyond that which you know we don't need anything like that around here but another thing to keep in mind is the gas consumption as well right this thing out here uh, for 25 kilowatts does absolutely have fantastic uh, load ratings. I calculated, you know, if we were out of power for a week here approximately, you'd spend, you know, half the money that you would if you went to go stay in a hotel uh, where you may have AC and other th amenities here that you wouldn't have at the house. But I'll tell you what, you lose out all your food that's in the freezer and the refrigerator as well as the creature comforts of home. So in my opinion, this is absolutely well worth it. If anybody has any questions, feel free to write in the comments or send me a note, and I'll be more than happy to answer them, all right? Have a great day.